Hi, this is M, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. I uh, want to show you a new little toy that I got to play with, and I want to tell you why I ended up purchasing it, how I ended up getting onto it in the first place, and some of the things that I'd intend to use it for, and why. The first thing that I will do a little demonstration of at the towards the end of the video is to use it for dried flowers. And that's something that we'll play around with. And so here's an example of a couple things. We've got some lavender and some liatris, which is also known as gay feather. And what is that? It is this little spray, this little air marker sprayer by Crayola. And basically the way this video is going to go, at least theoretically, is that I'm going to talk about why I got on to this and then we'll unbox it really quickly and then I'll do a demonstration later on and so if you want to listen to all the content but a little bit faster a little tip go down to the cog wheel on the timeline and change the playback settings to 1.5 that way you'll still hear, hear everything that I have to say but you'll get through it a little bit faster for those of you who know that I can be quite long-winded with my thoughts so having said that if this sounds like something that you're interested in then let's get started. The reason why I bought the airbrush that's electric that I showed you just a minute ago is because I came on I came onto it uh, after I had already had this particular uh, pump up model. Crayola evidently made a pump up model before the one that I just just showed you now, and basically you pump it up. You put your marker in here. I got this from Goodwill for a couple of dollars. I was walking along the store shelves and saw this and, and realized uh, that it was an air airbrush using markers and thought, well, that would be fun for a couple of bucks. I'm, I'm willing to play around with it, see what, see what we can do. I like the concept of using markers to lay down some color uh, rather than my regular airbrush, which I've got more of a professional airbrush, which you actually put paint, uh, you know, you put paint in it. It's a gravity fed, and uh, and it has an air, an air compressor. That's a lot more involved than something like this, where you just stick the marker in and go. And I thought, oh. So I have played around with it. I've played around with it enough to know that I really like it. So that's where I thought, well, I'd like to make a video to share with, with uh, some of you who might be interested in something different. I looked around to find out what one of these would cost because I thought, oh, some people like to, like to have a link. And I was curious what the retail was on this. I couldn't find it. I couldn't, maybe it's out of production. I, I don't know. But I did come upon the one that we're going to open up here in just a minute. So the thing about it is, and I'll show you, I'm pumping it up. And if I had a marker in here, which I'm not going to do it yet, I'll do it later in the demonstration. But you can hear you got good airflow in the beginning, but that's how quickly the air runs out. And you got to keep pumping. <laughs> so, so it just isn't that efficient if it's something that you want to get into. So that's why I ended up buying this other gizmo. Now we're back to this. This is a air marker sprayer by Crayola electric powered airbrush. To save some time I've taken it out of the box and cut all the appropriate tape area so now let's see if this will just open up and we'll find out what's in it. First we need some scissors to cut this guy off and where else is this attached here and it's attached here. So this is the new little air nozzle and it looks like you put your pin in and then you turn this to tighten it All right. and then here's the little air compressor unit take that out here's the hose actually it's got a little bit of, of weight to it it's not heavy heavy but it doesn't doesn't feel like it's feather light. You get a couple of little starter Crayolas. These are, I think I might have said it already, broad tip markers. And I understand 
but I'm not going to give a guarantee because I haven't personally tested it, that any broad tip marker, there are some other brands out there, uh, should work with this. And I'm also going to try some other um, types of markers that I have on hand, but that'll be, that'll be at a later date. So we've got these nice little colors. So here's what it comes with. And then this must be the, the power cord, which plugs into here. I've plugged in this little air compressor and uh, gotten everything set up. I wanted to show you that this is fully open. And you turn it clockwise and now it's closed. So this counterclockwise opens it, clockwise closes it. So let's get a pin and see if uh, what happens. We'll take this red. Now it's fully open. Push it down in there and then turn it clockwise until it's good and tight. And let's see what happens. Push the button. It's pretty quiet. Oh, okay. Kind of splotchy. I had to get a little closer. That's better. It's still splotchy. Which I know going into it, it's splotchy. So we'll talk about that. I, I know that. But I'm I'm using it knowing that it's going to be splotchy. Okay, so it works. We'll test a different color. What I like about it, though, and you'll see how I'm going to deal with the splotchiness for what I'm going to do here in a minute. What I like about it is the ease of just putting the crayon in. I'm putting in a uh, Crayola, Crayola longer one. It's a lot. It's longer than the than the other one. Okay, that's this one. What we're going to test first, that these are dried. What they are is, I press these, I eco-print I eco with them, I press them in a regular press, and then this is what they look like dried um, when I when I brought them in the garden and hung them upside down. You can see what color they are normally. But what's interesting is, if you look real close, the um, when you bring them in while they're still fresh and dry them, they're not nearly as well formed as what they are when you let them dry on the bush. And I'm not sure if you can see in the camera how much more well formed. But of course, by the time that they dry on the bush, they're all brown. So let's see if we can revive these and make them usable. I mean, not that, not that they're not pretty, if you know the way they are, but I just, I want to tint them. So turn this on, and then I'm going to spray it. And again, like I say, I don't care if it's blotchy, because we are going to do something else to it. Right now, we just want to get some color on there. Push this pin down a little bit more. There, yeah, that's better. Get my hand there now. Oh yeah, I didn't have the pin. <clears throat> excuse me, I didn't have the pin pushed down hard enough. That's plenty. Maybe a little bit more on the tip. So 
that's what, that's plenty. So what we're going to do, here's what it looks like now, which, let me put my other glasses on and look at it closer. Get my magnifying glasses and see. Alright, so what I'm going to do now, I mean if you look really close you can see the splotchiness. You need to have something to poke this into. And I have some, this is just packing foam, something to poke a hole in. You can insert it. Because when you do this, what I'm going to do now, it's going to create a pull. So you can see I played around with this before. And I'm going to put, I got these finger cots off of Amazon too. These are silicone. These are the greatest thing. I can't believe that I waited so long to get them. So when you want to just not get stuff on a couple of your fingers, I just use these. So that's how easy they are to put on. So now when I hold this up and then it starts to run, it won't get all down into my fingers. So get yourself some rubbing alcohol, 70%. This is 70% rubbing alcohol and just spray and what that'll do is it will it will make it a little less intense and more natural and it will take away the splotchiness and now the splotchiness is gone and so I think that's fine I, I can live with that that's really all I'm trying to accomplish so let's look at the before and the after. Okay. And then I just stick it into the into there to dry. <laughs> yeah. Well, your hands will be stained for a while. But that's okay, that's part of crafting. The next one I wanted to play with, I've been wanting to do, is get this color out. Is purple on a gay feather. Take this one and let me grab a purple marker. Alright, because I'm, I'm obsessive and compulsive, I bought the Big 40. And I want to find a color. Let's see, it looks more like that color that color or that color, this color or this color. Let's get this color. Let's play around with something bright. Yeah, well, let's see. What the heck? Yeah, that's probably too bright. That color, well, we have to start somewhere. Oh, that's a good color match. I don't know if you can see. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, that was a good color match. What color was that? Wild Orchid. take spray some of this and blend it in we get the cardboard yeah so that that colored it up more so before after So 
See, to me, it still looks fairly natural, as long as you, you know, do the right color selection or just, you know, spice it up because it's art. You're, you're in control. And I like them both, but this will, this will last for a while in your display. Now let's take a look at um, let's take a look at uh, a lavender, just because. Uh, I'm going to play with this one. Let's see what color it is. Oh yeah, that's a that's a pretty that's a pretty color. Oh, that came out. Yeah. That's actually a pretty good lavender color. Yeah, I like that. So that's after. And... Let me get the before. Before and after. And I have pretty, you know, powerful reading glasses on right now to see closer. And the, you can't even see the blotchiness. I wouldn't really have to do any spraying on these because you, it just, it's just not even noticeable to my human eye, even with magnifier glasses on. So I think we'll go ahead and, and, and wrap this up because that's what I wanted to show you. I've got all kinds of pressed or dried flowers here that we could play with, but this is basically what my intent was to get it. There are other things that we can do with this that I'll do in a separate video so that this one doesn't get too long. But for dried flowers that can take this, and the nice thing about it is it dries fast. And so you can just go on it. And the reason why I use alcohol when I want to blend it in is because alcohol also dries fast. So you're not totally re-wetting flowers that you just got done drying. But I think this would be good, to, you know, for doing grasses and, and any number of triables. I would hesitate to use it on pressed flowers unless they're really stout pressed flowers because you could... You could use the alcohol if you want to smooth it out, but I, I intended this more for the dryables and for some other playing around that we'll do, do later. So let's take a look at what we did today. Here's some before and afters. This is still drying, so it, it won't be quite as glossy. It's looking a little glossy to my eye right now because it's still wet. They haven't dried yet. But it's a pretty quick, pretty easy once you... <laughs> once you get the technique down. And it's a lot of fun. Stay tuned. I'm going to play around a little bit more for some ideas on how you can use this for journal pages and uh, maybe to make tags with it and stuff like that because there are background techniques that you can use for it. And I didn't show you what uh, stencils came in the pack. Most of them are geared more towards children, but you can certainly use your adult stencils, which is what I want to play around with next. It was about like I say, nineteen ninety five or ninety nine, twenty bucks on Amazon. And if it sounds like something that you're interested in, uh, give it a look. It's a lot of fun, and if you have any kids, they'd probably have fun playing around with it too. Thank you for subscribing. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to join me. Thank you very much.